first town school board meeting for May 14th to order at 6 o'clock. Um, <clears throat> we have comments and correspondence from the public. Hi, Rodney. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm uh, doing great. Did you want to make any statements or are you just here to listen? I'm just always working when you guys are doing this yeah. <laughs> and this is my turn to observe and if I feel the need I need to speak then I'll speak. Okay. So. Um, so we have approval of the April 9th board meeting minutes. Did everybody have a chance to look at them? Mm -hmm. Any changes? Uh, make a motion to approve the April 9th board meeting minutes. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Business reports, Laura's not here, but did she send any? Oh, she sent me. <laughs> I am well prepped. So I don't have a financial report. I do have the warrants and the bills. I have the bond anticipation note for the board to sign. You don't need to make a motion about that. And then we do need to add food service contract renewal and paid lunch price you need to set the paid lunch uh, cost for now. <coughs> so I can do all of those things. So if you would like I can start with the warrants. Sure. The bills. Our table's so big. I know. <laughs> Make some <sense> later. <laughs> Uh, I will make a motion to approve the warrants for April for $479,880.02. Can you repeat that, my thing? My keypad is off. $479,880.02. Thank you. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor of approving April warrants in the amount of $479,880.02, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you. The next thing I guess we should do is the bond uh, anticipation note. It is with People's Trust Company of St. Albans. Uh, and as we have talked about in previous board meetings, it is so that you are securing your debt so that it will transfer with you completely to the new school district and uh, you will not be charged any interest if you do not actually use this loan. Um, there are three tabs that are marked and each of you needs to sign. There's the promissory note, the disbursement request and authorization, and the loan agreement. My backup pen doesn't work, so that works quite well. Thank you. 
So, the next thing I have is a renewal of the Food Service Management Company Agreement. It is the fourth of four possible renewals. Um, and the fee is reduced 2.2% from the previous year. If you have any questions about that, please email Laura and she'd be happy to verify that I said the right thing. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking, it would still be with the Abbey, mm -hmm. which, who holds the contract. Um, by doing this, um, this will, we've already worked with Northern Mountain Valley, so this contract will be honored in the new school district. And then the new board will decide what they want to do, whether they want to go out to bid or uh, whether there would be, a, because they do local programs in your other schools. So. so for that, we would want a motion to approve um, a renewal, the fourth renewal of the food service management contract with the Abbey and authorize the board chair to sign. Can I make a statement? Uh, does, does anything change as far as the contract from last year to this year? Uh, Just the management fee is okay. reduced. I'm sorry. I was thinking yourself. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's the management fee that's reduced, not the price per lunch. No, that's the next. Oh. So I'll make the motion to approve the fourth renewal of the Abbey contract. I will second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay. Great. And speaking of paid lunch, uh, setting the paid lunch, as you know, um, because uh, free and reduced lunch subsidies um, are, we, we are not allowed to have those prices, those subsidies carry our food service programs uh, and um, subsidize the paid lunch. There's something called a paid lunch equalizing tool that there's a formula that we, uh, that food service program is run through and it tells us how much we are able to charge. Um, the minimum increase is 10 cents. The recommendation here is for a 10 cent increase to the paid lunch price for FY19, uh, no FY20, pardon me, FY19's paid lunch price is $2.55 and so we are proposing $2.65. So we would want a motion for that so you can set that price for next year and then that can go in newsletters and um, send that out for next year for students and families. Who mandates the 10 cent increase? That's the Fed? It is because it's the federal money that supports the program. Okay. The new lunch rate of now 265 yes. per meal? Yes. I will second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Perfect. So there's no signature for that. So that is all of the business that Laura gave me. Do we, do we want to add? Let's add that right in there. So we do have the contract from VHV, who does our preventative maintenance, and this is just the renewal of that contract. So it um, looks at belts, condenser coils, Uh, air filters. Mm -hmm. That's really all it says in it. But inspections. Yeah, inspections. Two major inspections per year in the spring and the fall. Are you been happy with the service? Yep. Yep. Have you been? Oh, it lists the number of things that they do on here if you want to take a look at it. I don't know, 
does it say how much? Seventeen hundred dollars yeah. a year. One thousand seven hundred. Two installments of that. Oh, two install. Sorry. Uh, Three thousand five hundred and twenty-eight dollars per year, payable in two installments. And it's a one-year renewal. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So you're looking for a motion to um, authorize the board chair to sign. Absolutely. Yep. I'll make a motion to authorize the board chair to sign the VHB contract preventative maintenance maintenance contract. Yep. For one year. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. That would be that be. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. Second page. Okay. only have uh, two things on here really and one is the draft report of our um, uh, integrated <coughs> field review visit and uh, the coming events because there's a lot of them coming up. Um, so the integrated field review draft report was presented on Thursday by Josh, Josh Soulier from the AOE and there's still a little bit of um, tweaking that is involved in the whole report, but the the um, commendations and recommendations were shared with the leadership team, and there uh, appeared that there weren't going to be any changes, even minor ones, in those. So the, that's the part of the report that I'm sharing. It is broken down into five uh, different categories, academic proficiency, personal personalization, um, safe and healthy schools, high quality staffing, and investment priorities. And in each of those categories, the team was um, uh, was planning to give uh, two recommendations and two commendations in in those categories. And in some places, there's really only one recommendation. Um, so mostly because they had a hard time coming up with things. To yes, I yes, understand. which is a which is a great thing to have. Um, so in academic proficiency. There was, uh, there was actually a lot of excitement on the part of the team looking at the development of the K-12 district-wide curriculum um, as being a really collaborative process, giving teachers an opportunity to build common language. Um, there's a clearly defined scope and sequence of learning for all students, um, especially for math and ELA. Uh, in collaboration with the curriculum director and other stakeholders, teachers and instructional coaches collaboratively built evidence-based sets of instructional practices, frameworks, and intervention models in an effort to support all learners. So the big commendation there was the fact that it was collaborative and lots of people all over the SU talked about being involved in that process. Um, the recommendations is just to continue to develop and strengthen those proficiency-based learning strategies and practices and support the consistent and effective, effective implementation across all schools and consider exploring the process of communicating local assessment information to stakeholders, particularly students, who are asking for more data to inform their learning. Um, so taking that information that we already have and making sure that students are really clear about what it is um, mm -hmm. that they're being assessed on and how they're doing and also, um, and I'm, I'm just going to add, and, you know, extending that to, you know, parents as well. Um, personalization. 
<clears throat> um, there's lots of opportunities for flexible pathways and course offerings, and um, the SU has invested in positions across the supervisory union to support students in those processes. Um, students are provided with opportunities to share their voice and have various modes of choice in their learning. So they found lots of evidence of students being able to choose things that they were interested in learning. And then um, under recommendations, FNWSU should consider examining their personalized learning plan process to ensure the process is efficient, effective, and understood by all stakeholders. And um, it's for innovative ways to communicate information, such as course offerings and flexible pathway options to stakeholders more effectively. I know the personalized learning plans are um, different in each school. Like how that it that isn't something that that um, FNWSU has worked on together. So the seventh and eighth, especially uh, seventh and eighth grade, here in Sheldon and at MVU, we do them differently. You know, they all have them, but they're not the same. Which I don't think was their recommendation for them to be the same, but just to look at how they can become more a part of. Mm -hmm. um, their learning and their choices when they're thinking about what they want to do. Um, safe and healthy schools. The SU demonstrates consistent and purposeful attention to student appreciation and working toward goals as a school community. Examples included prominent display of student work, positive messaging, PBIS charts and expectations, recognition of students in classrooms, and creating visual reminders of school cultural expectations and it demonstrates a purposeful level of commitment to the social, emotional, and physical well-being of students across the SU, as evidenced by multiple examples of programs, events, collaborations, and supports. Uh, under recommendations to continue to examine the systemic coordination of social, emotional learning practices to bring more consistency to the accessibility of services and supports across school. So that's completely in alignment with where we are right now and the work that we're mm -hmm. doing. It's That is actually part of our um, CIP for next year and, and was this year. So that makes it, that recommendation makes a lot of sense. Um, high quality staffing. The SU maintains strong alignment and cohesiveness in professional development offerings at the supervisory union and school levels with opportunities for staff to build expertise from within, that was um, something that even the team here, they spoke a lot about, being really impressed by that. Um, parents, teachers, and other stakeholders report overall satisfaction with the hard work and approach of administrators, teachers, and central office staff. That was nice to hear. Uh, under recommendations, the SU should continue to provide professional learning to support the implementation of the new teacher evaluation model in addition to the development and implementation of a new administrator central office evaluation system. And Sheldon will be doing that a little bit differently next year. So. Mm -hmm. Under investment priorities, the SU is commended on their commitment to improving social, emotional learning and behavior supports across schools. Administration has prioritized the creation of positions in support of behavior and social emotional learning. Teachers have engaged in learning to the, to the strengthening student-adult relationships, and students can articulate the sense of care and commitment they feel from the entire system. The SU is commended for their use of data in improving teaching and learning in all schools. Administrators, teacher leaders, coaches, and teachers all routinely weekly, bi-weekly, and monthly, use data to ingest instructional practices to meet the needs of students. So the PLC is a strong system throughout this SU in all of the schools. Um, recommendations, while in some schools communication between home and school is reported to be strong, there are others wherein parents report irregular communication about student progress and disciplinary issues. We recommend that schools survey parents on communication effectiveness in order to identify the best and most consistent methods for homeschool communication. I have to say, um, when Josh came and reported this, he spoke 
to the fact that the social emotional supports across the SU that was consistently commended all the schools for the work that was done there um, and people couldn't say enough about the work uh, in that realm and then also our, our PD and uh, staffing that you know yep. people were really impressed by the good work that's happening and what's nice is it's peers so it's educators from around the county that are coming and um, it, you know it's it's somehow feels more authentic when a group of teachers and administrators come and look around you because I think they're looking for things with a different lens than when just the agency of ed come. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I, this, so this happened for, um, Sheldon and then a few weeks after that I was part of a team mm -hmm. that went on an IFR visit and so it was really interesting to be able to have both of those experiences and think about, um, the, what kinds of information it takes to come up with. To, to be able to come up with commendations and recommendations and what that, what that means across the schools. Um, and originally I was a little bit, um, I, I don't know if skeptical was the right word, but wondering how much individual schools would really be able to get out of an SU report. Um, but I think that it's, I think that it was really helpful to look at um, the places where I thought either Sheldon was strong or the SU was strong, that they found a lot of, enough evidence across the SU mm -hmm. to be able to say, yes, everywhere it's strong. And then the recommendations, there there was nothing on there that that surprised me, yeah. that I didn't say, yep, that's that's what we're working on next. Or, exactly. That's something that, you know, we knew, you know, we needed to, so. And most of them were to continue to develop, continue to do right. the work we're doing. Um, but it was it was nice that the admin team all had that same feeling that these are, there was no, oh, this is what they saw. <laughs> you know, it really, they were all things that we were yeah. working on already. And then the coming events calendar, there's a lot on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there always is this time of the year. Um, we're st you know starting with some kindergarten screening coming up. Um, there is uh, some concerts happening. Uh, later next week is the I Grew Up in Sheldon Dialogue Night here, which is the um, historical society is putting that on, and um, we're gonna. Some of our students have been involved in. Um, studying the history of Sheldon and chronicling that and so they're hoping that people who have lived in Sheldon um, will come and just talk about talk about what their experiences were how Sheldon was different or how it's the same um, what they remember from it and so that you know I, I it's the first time I've done something like that it should be really interesting mm -hmm. to see um, how it turns out you know we've um, shared it on Facebook and the Historical Society has too but so have our kids and we sent something home so we'll see. Should be interesting. Um, we're going to have May 31st we'll have our last whole school meeting. Um, well actually it's our second to the last because we do one on the last day of school but we'll have our second to the last whole school meeting celebrating safety and uh, we'll also have an author visit on that day. So that will be fun. And then our last day of school for our students is um, June 14th. And then we will have a few days of in-service the next week to make up a couple snow days. Well, three. Thank you. Julie will run as superintendent today. I know she was going to be late. Yes, so she is going to be late. I sent you by email the, um, whoops, wrong school. Sent you, um, a board report, um, here it is. 
so, I mean, this time of year is a lot of hiring. And Christine and I were walking into the meeting, and that was the topic of conversation. Um, contracts are coming back in. This Thursday is the last day. We have some folks that are uh, in interview processes and have extensions, but we're really starting to see uh, who's definitely coming back. And so then the second round of hiring actually really begins. Um, preparing support staff contracts next. Um, we're also working closely with, we have been working closely with NMB for Sheldon around contracts uh, and making sure that all the information is consistent so that there are very few, if any, bumps in the road. Um, we are, um, MVSD is going to be having a budget vote on June 4th. Uh, uh, June 11th, pardon me, and their informational meeting will be June 4th. Um, your informational meeting is tonight, and the vote for the Northern Mountain Valley Unified School District budget is May 21st by Australian ballot, correct? Yes. And also for board seats, so Emily is running, and I understand, Julia, you may be... Um, have something to say about that too? <laughs> yeah, so I have decided to run as a write in. Um, I'm just sort of unsure, as, mm -hmm. which would be the reason I'm not on the ballot. Um, but seeing nobody else giving any interest, I, I will run. Um, so I'll run as a write in. Um, and I will say this came up at the Montgomery meeting last night. The, meeting in Berkshire on the 20th, mm -hmm. that is a formal um, official meeting. Yeah, where there will be a clerk and um, okay. minutes taken. Um, so just so people are aware that the other meetings are um, sort of informal meetings, um, but that will be the official like budget presentation meeting. Okay. So that's the 20th, you said? Yes. In Berkshire? Yep. And the other piece I had to share is over the break, um, Kosha and Robert and Jarvis and Tanya Hayes, our special ed director, our student services director, and Linda Ross Turner from MBU, all attended the RTI at Work conference. Um, Christy and administrators throughout the SU have been to that, uh, and it's really driven, it's part of why we have um, a really strong MTSS system in our schools. And so we were the team of new people that went, um, and we wanted to go over the April break because we thought there'd be no budget votes, mm -hmm. there'd be no, you know, which didn't quite work out for me, because <laughs> we had an informational meeting that I had to miss because of canceled flights. But, we went, um, and it was really a very successful um, conference. We learned a great deal. There's a lot that we brought back, and we have sort of a core team that is working, um, particularly with MVU, around um, proficiencies and how they work together with um, an MTSS system. And so, and personalization. So all those things, we also had a meeting last Friday with um, and Leslie from Sheldon, you can't think of her last name all of a sudden. Rainville, Rainville of course, uh, was here at, at that training as well. And we were talking about personalized learning plans uh, and how we, you know, what's the next stage of those in our schools and how we can strengthen them and make them more integrated into the learning that's happening in all of our schools. So between those two, events. Um, we have a lot of work that's happening in school, so that's been very positive. And then Kosha sent some information about continuous improvement plans. I know just today we've been working um, with the Agency of Ed, well, just getting the answer from the Agency of Ed um, around Sheldon's continuous improvement plan and who's going to upload it and what it needs to look like. So that's all been resolved and taken care of and is all being addressed. So we're continuing to make sure that all of that um, transition, you know, these are very important tasks that we don't want to make sure get fall through the cracks. 
So, and so Kosha has a curriculum update there for you. And I did email them to you. So that's what I have. Okay. Don't know if you have anything from when. I know you just walked in, but is there any, any updates on your end? Uh, well, I'm curious what the answer was about the CIP. Is that going to be you? Nope, you've me? got it. Okay. We've, we've given it to you. They uploaded it on the grant management system okay. under your SU. And so we've I'll get the email shared it. Ready it's all time. getting, it's all, uh, yes, but it's all done for you. Okay. I'll let our, tech, our um, grant coordinator know that. Yes, and they do, they should know. Okay. Coach has been in touch. Awesome. Just today. Just today. I don't know what you've already spoken about in terms of the transition, Julia. Um, nothing yet. Just, I mean, I can update on the litigation, and um, it's sort of we're waiting on the courts at this point. Um, it's likely to be appealed to the Supreme Court, um, but I'm not. I think they hear arguments again at the end of the week. Yeah. Um, and then the legislatures. Scheduled so, to end this week, right? Yeah, the so. legislative session I, I heard again today, they're mm -hmm. hoping to end by Sunday. I don't think delay language really has momentum at this point because neither the House or the Senate are willing to budge on what they wanted in, mm -hmm. in their delay language. So I'm not anticipating that, that that will end up coming to fruition. So I I don't see anything really in front of us that is likely to prevent the July 1, 2019 operational date for Sheldon to be joining the MV. Now there, I had heard that there was language embedded in another bill. Is that so? That they now embedded as well? uh, Senator Baruth embedded the delay language in to um, the special ed bill, mm -hmm. and I I got a few words today from some people in Montpelier mm -hmm. that are, are kind of in the know that it doesn't appear that that bill is going to move forward either. So um, I think that you know we're just, the clock is running out on the legislative mm -hmm. session. So I, I'm expecting that um, we're probably not going to see anything there. I'm wondering if we've thought this kind of all along, if right. they couldn't come to consensus about delay language if they will, in the 11th hour, which we're kind of in, mm -hmm. attach to the budget bill some of the details like small schools grants, um, maybe default budget language. I know that that's a little more controversial. I know that that piece of the language was being mm -hmm. used as a bargaining trip chip in Montpelier, so I don't know if that'll end up in there, but I'm expecting there'll be some move like that in the next two days. Yes. Our hope was sort of the, the language from Senator Baruth around no default budget without the delay language that I, you know, that some of that is politicking and positioning and yeah. people doing their job. And so we are hoping that that is maybe just posturing and at the 11th and a half hour, um, something will be put in a miscellaneous education bill or... For default budget? Yes. There is, um, did you see the 706? I haven't seen that today. I was looking. There's language that um, we do at least have authority to borrow in statute that they found. So yes, but I didn't realize that it applied to newly formed districts. Does. They found it late last week. So um, we may not need it. Right. You just will have to keep going back. So in 706J, in Title 16, 706J, subsection uh, eight, the Board of Directors may be authorized by the electorate to borrow money pending receipt of payments from the education fund by the issuance of its notes or orders payable not later than one year from date. A newly formed union school district, whoever is authorized to borrow sufficient funds to meet pending obligations. So. Okay. Excellent. So we can pay our people. That's where we are right now. Is, is just wanting to make sure that we are, you know. People are coming to the informational meeting tonight. I'm hoping that if anybody in Children watches your meetings that mm -hmm. they miss tonight, that they'll come next Monday to Berkshire mm -hmm. at seven. Yep. So I do think that there's some there's some confusion, and maybe I should just say that out loud here. Right. 
about how um, you're going to be you're going to be voting on a merged budget, so the number is much larger than what people are used to. However, overall, it is only up 2.2 percent, around $350,000 when you when you merge the four town budgets together. So it is a pretty respectable increase in a budget that, that that's that large. There were lots of questions in our previous two um, informational meetings about what's it going to look like when I go to the polls? What's that ballot going to mm. look like? Because voters in each town are going to be voting on board seats in all towns. So there was a lot of questions last night. I think Emily is on the ballot. And um, Julia mentioned last night that she's willing to, to be uh, written in for the vacant seat. And Sheldon, there's no one on that line. So Julia Callen. Um, if people are interested in writing in for the Sheldon, I don't know if anybody else is going to launch a write-in campaign. There's one member who's up for election in Bakersfield, not opposed on the ballot. Uh, there are two seats open in Montgomery. One there, Mary Niles is running, so she'll be on the ballot. And there is um, a vacant seat in Montgomery. Probably not going to remember the three names, but there were three people last night that mentioned um, Marianne Wood. Jared Jewett and Barnard, Catherine. Catherine Barnard. There were three that had expressed interest in that for the Montgomery seat. There are no seats up for election for Berkshire because those are in that kind of cycle, that rotation, and one of the Bakersfield seats is not yet either. So people just didn't know what they were expected to do, so that was a big part of our conversation mm -hmm. at last night's meeting. Uh, there's a, some contract issues, possibly for an executive session. Uh, I have still. I have one. Okay. Um, so I would suggest that we move into an executive session. Um, I would invite Lynn and Morgan, as well as Julie and Christy, um, to discuss contracts. Um, we are premature public knowledge. It's a really place the board or a party is significant. Disappointed. Disappointed. You got it. Nice job.